lot of things uh, really well out on the basketball floor. Good surrounding cast there. We'll see some other bench players also in charge out here. Brad Cox for the Braver Bobcats. Uh, his assistant, Joe Mallory, also for the Northern Pirates, a new coach there on the boys' side of things. Josh Deitch, a alumnus of Northern High School here. Michael Locke, Sam Cruzy, his assistant coaches. Yeah, and uh, Coach Locke sporting new hairdo. He has got a little pink hair going on. I'll have to explain that when he comes up at halftime of this game. Tip control there by the Bobcats. It, they'll bring it down the floor. Layup up and in. Number 21, Logan Odell with a little finger roll from the left side. Two points for him. As, and then he gets a steal to the rack up the glass and good. So far, it's the Logan Odell show. 4-0 Bramer. Inbound comes in. Here come the Pirates with it. Pass up over the top. to get it down to the front court to Uribe. Skip pass across the line, then back top of the key. That's McDelly who has it there. He'll call out a play. Left-hand dribble out near half court. Guarded there by Odell. Comes right side, Lyon. Lyon looks inside to Elliott. He kicks it. Shot from the baseline. Three-pointer off the iron. No good. Rebound at Jesse Utt. That shot was put up by Jacob Uribe. Utt, free throw line. Jump shot. Little two-hand pass underneath. Shot no good. They come out of there clean with it. Chilton Elliott. He'll slow things down as they get a pass half court over near the left hash. Almost stolen away by Jesse Hutt. Had that been stolen away, that would have been a flush job, my friend. <laughs> I hear he can jam it. I haven't seen it yet. Well, he high jumps about six foot six. If that tells you anything and he goes 6'5", that ought to be a pretty good indicator. That one saved almost back in. Good hustle shown right there by Tyler McNelly. Not able to get it done, though, as I believe, like I say, that's stick vote. Bill Engler had some words with Mr. Engler, a great official and a selfless man who he's not out here doing it for the money or anything else. He loves what he's coming out here working with the kids and helping them with a few life lessons along the way. <laughs> the Bramer Bobcats, they lead it 4-0. Uh, open for the three. Selfless there, gives it up, comes back out front with it into the hands of Joe Webb. Stephen Shue now left elbow, leaves it for up there, out at the free throw line, backs about out, back out, gives it to Shue. Odell down in the quarter, pulls up just inside the line, way too strong. Rebound up underneath, no good. That one was put up by Dylan Hall. His shot, no good from about point blank range. It was mighty contested, though, I would have to say. For uh, nothing the score as Bramer leads it. Up to inbound, he'll trigger it, baseline left. All right. Smacks the ball, gets it in into the hands of Webb. Webb now out top. They find Ut down in the far corner. It went on all the way to Shue and then back out front and all the way back around to the left side. Good ball movement shown right here by the Bobcats, Brock. Crisp with the ball. Into the lane it goes. Somewhat fortunate right there with the Bobcats. Turnaround shot. No good by Dylan Hall. Hall had a good shot. Couldn't hit it. Into the front court it comes. Chilton Ellard. Ellie make that Hayden River rather. Now, stolen away by Ut. Ut, no numbers. He'll go to the rack, goes to lay it up. He's fouled, fouled hard on the attempt. Ross Lyon gets a good piece of him. Lyon fouls Ut. That'll send him to the line. Looks like it's probably going to be shooting two. Indeed it is, says Mr. Engler. So far, 4 nothing. Bramer out front. We've got about 5.44 to go here. First period. Second game here tonight. The Thorburn girls victorious in game number one. Just yet, it's the first of two. Check it out, Stephen Shu. Into the game, going to come. I believe that's going to be Kyle Kelly. We'll take a look at the scorebook here. Ross Lyon picks up his first personal, first team foul. It's going to be Juan Brandon into the game, actually. As that hits both free throws, six nothing Bramer. Rimmer over the top to Lyon. Lyon turns around from the right block. His shot no good. Ball comes down into the hands of Dylan Hall. Hall gets it out. Front court it goes. Uh, passes up the three. They work it around. Far corner now. Back out to the right wing into the near quarter. Uh, his three-pointer on the way from there. It's good. Get out back off Jesse Uth that far and give him an open three-pointer. Five of the game for Uth. Nine-nothing. Kramer. I'm expecting a timeout probably coming from Coach Deitch here sometime soon if we don't have something happen positive for the Pirates. End of the game now for the Bramer Bobcats. It's going to be number 44, Kyle Kelly now enters, like I'd mentioned before. Norburn inbounds. McNelly calls out a play. Left side, left wing to Rimmer. Reby had it for a moment. Now Rimmer from the baseline. Shot too hard. Crashing the boards, McNelly, and... 
As he crashed those boards, it looked to me like he got a piece of Logan Odell. They're going to whistle him for it. Nine. Nothing, nothing, Norbert. Juan Brandon has seen some court time here for Bramer as well in this one. That'll be McNelly's first personal, second team foul. Out of the game goes Jacob Uribe and checking in for Norbert. Going to be number 31, Tristan McNelly. Three on the way, well off the mark by Juan Brandon. Up with, right a, with steal. a steal. A little no-look pass, stolen away. A nice job there by the youngster, Tristan McNelly. Tristan McNelly, just a freshman, 5'7 guard. Also into the game now for Norburn, Jacob McCoy. Contact underneath, Shelton Elliott. And Kyle Kelly exchanging pleasantries again. Tristan McNelly got to trigger the inbound for the Pirates now. They trail it 9-0. Looking for a little something positive. Goes out to Rimmer. His three on the way left side. Not a bad looking shot. No good though. Rebound comes down. Coming out of there with it was Juan Brandon. Front court pass taken away. Taken away by number 13, Jacob McCoy. McCoy, another youngster, a six-foot freshman guard, which in the mind of an experienced left-handed guard that came from down here a year ago in Pride Chase. No-look pass, and a pretty nice one coming from the freshman. Chilton Elliott got a piece of it, wasn't quite ready for it, I don't think. Up with it. Now they'll work it around. That pass off the mark, an unforced error there by the Bobcats. Still, they lead it early, 9-0, 44 to go, opening period. Juan Brandon threw the ball away as Pirates will inbound. That's McNelly, Tristan McNelly, and stolen away is uh, Logan O'Dell. Logan O'Dell put a floater up, looked like he tried to throw an alley-oop up to Ut, and he was a little long. Up picks it up, gets the rebound, and he picks up two points. That makes it 11-0. Ut now was seven here early in this one. Took the tough shot, got his own rebound on it, able to put it up and in. A little tenacity shown there by the six foot five inch senior. Long three pointer on the way. Tristan McNelly hits the tray, gets the Pirates off the snide. Good looking shot. He cut it in rhythm there. That's a nice stroke. Like I said, and he comes back down here. And Jacob McCoy is able to poke the ball away and slow down the offensive run for the Bobcats. Another substitution into the game for the Bobcats. It looks like got to be number 12 into the game as. Hayden Lamer. Hayden, Hayden Lamer, I believe it is. Hayden. Hayden Lamer into the game. Ut, right wing, finds. That's Lamer. Now they get out to Kiwan Johnson. Johnson between the leg dribble, gives it off to Lamer. Kiwan wears the number 14. He saw a lot of court time last year for Coach Brad Cox. Shot up. Logan Odell with the deuce. Odell, six points in the game for him. Seven points in the quarter also for Jesse Ut. Eight, eight, seven and, uh, let's make it seven and six. They got 14. I'm not trying to figure out where that other point came from. Oh, uh, that was three-pointer. They gave Logan three on that yeah. last one. Well, three-pointer for him. Seven apiece for him and Ut. 14 to three, our score. I fingered the two-one, and you picked up the two-pointer. Ah, gotcha. It's a... Uh, little peripheral vision uh, issue there. Long pass to McCoy. He corrals it, gets it off Tristan McNelly. McNelly looks inside, tries to get it in down there. A couple more Pirates have entered the game. I'll have to do a little catching up. 33 and 53 have entered. 53, Hayden outfit. Off it. Hayden off it. 33 is, you say 33? Correct. That's Jacob Uribe. Back into the game. One of the starters. Inside it goes. Off it. Off it. Tied up by two Braver Bobcats. Kelly there for the tie up, along with number 12, Hayden Lamer. It'll be Norburn basketball inbound baseline left. It comes in. Shot fired up. That's good. Three point basket there. Jacob Uribe. So 14 6 now. And Norman has used a three-point shot to kind of claw their way back in this one, my friend. Yeah, definitely not out of it. 
Kiwan Johnson, a little fake. Jump stop in the lane, kicks it out to Hutt. Open three, right side. Back iron, no good. Rebound down to Kelly. Hutt'll get it again, into the lane. Little floater up and in, Jesse Hutt. The cream rising to the top right there. I've seen a shot like that on different levels. Indeed you have. Jesse is firing, I think, to play at some of those levels. Something I was talking over took Brad Cox earlier. Turn back, turn over there by the Pirates. They got a little too quick with the basketball. Maybe a little bit too much of a sense of urgency. It'll be Braver Bobcat ball. It'll come into their point guard, Jesse Utt. That'll bring it up slowly. His team out in front by 10. Right side it goes. Kramer looking pretty patient with it here. Looking for a good shot. Logan O'Dell jump stop from about eight. No good. Boy found himself in a good spot. Just couldn't hit it. Rebound taken out of there by Uribe. Uribe off to McNelly. That's Tyler. Off to Tristan. His three on the way. No good. Nice rebound there, though, by Jacob Uribe. Three point on the way by McCoy. That one too strong. Rebound taken out by the post man for the Bobcats, Kyle Kelly. Kelly off to Jesse Yutt. Up near side, Kiwan Johnson, his three. Just off the back of the iron, no good. Little runner up and in. Hitting that shot, Logan O'Dell gives him now nine points in the quarter. Keats telling Norburn, calm down. Grab the play board, draw something up. Probably expect a timeout here pretty quick, I would imagine. 18, so into the quarter, come in as well. Stolen away by the Bobcats. Ut with it, about 26 seconds to go. Gets it off to Odell. Odell finds Johnson. Left side, jump stop from about 10. Hands it to Kelly, free throw line. His shot no good. Taken out this time. Rebound controlled by Joe Webb. Webb to Jesse Ut. The Bobcats in all likelihood will look for the last one. Instead they find Kelly open. Hook shot, no good. Rebound McCoy, five seconds to go. That's McNelly with it right side. He's fouled. Not a good foul there by Kiwan Johnson. Kiwan, a very active, very athletic player. Not a uh, foul. I'm pretty sure that Coach Cox, Coach Mallory, would have liked to have seen not made there. There's a half court, two seconds to go. Wasn't affecting much of anything. Yeah. Kiwan, though, a good hustle player. We'll see some good play out of him. I'll tell you what, he's active. Hard to keep up with. You can tell that out there on the court. Three-pointer, long one. I thought he'd hit it for a second. I did, too. That was Tristan McNelly. You can tell they work on that a lot. Coach Locke, a big smile from the sideline. 18-6, to six, Norburn leads it after one. We'll be back, back in 60 seconds here on Wave TV. Hello, this is Nicole at Cross Connections Computer Essentials. Are you tired of driving all the way to the city for those computer parts that you just cannot find locally? Well, you don't have to anymore. We carry many computer parts and accessories that others do not. Also, with our speedy shipping service, we can order almost any computer part or accessory and have it here for you in two days. We also specialize in PC and laptop repair, networking, and repair of handheld devices such as iPads, iPods, iPhones, and most Android tablets and cell phones. So stop by today at 721 Webster Street on the north side of the square in Chillicothe. Cross Connections Computer Essentials, your hometown computer store. We're back here on Wave TV. Rod Tompkins, Brock Kerr, game number one, a 30-point victory for the Lady Pirates out of Norburn. I think 45-15 to 15 the final. 18-6 to 6 after one in this one. The Bobcats lead it. That gets the... Inbound in the backcourt here to start the second period. Webb with it right side. Takes the three. It's good. Joe Webb into the scorebook with a tray there. 21 to 6. Bramer. Tristan McNelly. Long pass over the top as he gets it to Tyler McNelly. Right side, Ross Lyon, who's re-entered, leaves it there. Jacob Arabia three. No good. Just yet. Weak side rebound. All right, up the floor quickly to the free throw line. Leaves it for Odell, now top of the circle. Up with it, again for Odell. Going to drive baseline. It's caught up there, a little push, I believe, that Mr. Englert's going to get him for. We'll see who that goes against. As he's going to say... Jacob Uribe. Jacob Uribe picks it up. and Picks up his first to be third team foul. Jacob went out for quite a bit during that first period. I thought he had another foul or two, but apparently not the case. Steven Shu with his shot. Picks the three. Steven Shu, another three-pointer, the fourth one here in this first half by Bramer. 24-6, 7.05 to go. Tristan McNelly, skip pass over the top to Hayden Rimmer. 
Rimmer looks across the defense. Instead goes to the corner, Jacob Uribe. Uribe skip pass intended for Ross Lyon. Ross not able to corral it. And Ross has uh, kind of grown a lot over the uh, last couple of years. An excellent shooter. As, uh, they looked inside for him that time. I think probably a little more comfortable stepping out and taking the long shot. So that pass too tall for him. Probably would have been too tall for anybody on the floor, I would guess. 24 to 6. Bramer out in front. Pass taken away. This one taken away by Tyler McDelly. Front court it comes to Rimmer, who will pull it back out and slow it down now. He is harassed by Joe Webb. He gets it off to Tyler McNelly. McNelly down into the far corner. It goes to Rimmer. Now back to McNelly to the left hash. Dribbles to the left elbow. Kicks it Rimmer. Three-pointer on the way left side. It's good. Hayden Rimmer. Good ball movement results in the tray. And there's a foul tipped out of, out of bounds. It's going to go the way of Northern Pirates as that pass was pinballed around out of bounds. No two-point field goals in the game yet for the Northern Pirates. They're nine points coming off three, three-point shots. Tyler McNelly, a couple defenders after him. He gets it away to Rimmer, now gets it back. As he dribbles between the circles. Left side to Rimmer again, who wasn't quite as open that time, strangely enough. Finds himself pretty open this time, but uh, just a couple steps away from him. Doesn't take the shot. Now gets to Tristan McNelly. Near side, Ross Lyon. His three on the way. In and out. No good. Good hustle shown by Uribe. Ud as well. Long pass goes up. And good court awareness shown right there by Tristan McNelly. The freshman throws it off from Steven Shue and out of bounds. Saves that possession for the Northern Pirates. Substitutions. Kiwan Johnson, Shu Odell, along with number 23 for Bramer out there on the floor as well, which is Dylan Hall. Way downtown is Tristan McNelly. He hit the train. Tristan McNelly, another three-pointer. NBA depth. Ut with a turnaround jump. It's no good. Gets his own rebound. Tips it back in. I would hate to think how easy Jesse Hutt just made that look right there. 26-12 to 12 with 5.25 to go here in the second. Hit it with a good hustle and all that, but found himself in such a good position. I don't think that, Rimmer would have been expecting that. that. That little put-back shot, pretty easy for him. Ross Lyon with it between the wheels. Near side it comes. McNelly. It's Tyler McNelly. Now the corner to Rimmer. Rimmer back out top to... Tyler McNelly picks up his dribble, gets it off to Uribe. Kiwan Johnson got a piece of it. Shot short of the mark by Uribe. Remmer Loose ball it. rebound ends up in the hands of Jesse Utt. Remmer popped from the corner. They're double teaming. But Norbert's trying to get into the ball. All right. A little one-hand floater. Got himself between steps. A pretty shot. Not a shot that he would have taken in a real intense, closely contested game, but well, one you might see on the playground from Jesse Yeti hit it, though. That's the bottom line. In and out from Tristan McNelly. Well, Logan Odell drives the baseline. Pulls up. Finger oh, roll. Good. Nice. <laughs> Logan Odell. Made it look elementary. 11 in this game. Him and Hutt have carried the bulk of the scoring load for Bramer. They've had also heard from Stephen Shue and Joe Webb there, though. McDelly, no look pass, goes off to Rimmer, far corner, Jacob Uribe. Inside, nothing but Bobcats there, taken away by Logan Odell. Blocking foul, going to go against Tyler McDelly. He'll get a hand up from his teammate Ross Lyon and also from Logan Odell. 30 to 12, the Bramer Bobcats in control here. Checking back in, Chilton Elliott. Back into the game for Bramer. Going to be number 22, Juan Brandon. As you said, Tyler McNelly picks up his second personal, 14 foul for the Pirates. Kiwan Johnson going to run it from the point here. Right down in the corner, he's open from there. Thinks about taking it. McNelly guards him. Johnson now, left wing, dribbles it left side of the lane. Now hands it over to Ut. Ut looks inside. Double team there, but the Bobcats still come out with the basketball. Remember. Juan Brandon. Now Kiwan Johnson with it into the lane. He won. A little panicked with it there, but comes out with it. Passes it for Brandon. We've got a timeout on the floor. I believe that's Coach Dykes that wants to talk things over with his Northern Pirate squad. 30 to 12, our score. 3.25 to go here in the second period. We're going to take a timeout right along with the two teams. A 30 second timeout. Back with a more than a half minute here on Wave TV. 
This year, wrap up your holidays in an unforgettable way. Indulge your loved ones with jewelry as unique as she is, with gorgeous gold and exquisite diamonds in the latest fashions. It's nearly impossible to go wrong. From classic to modern, there are options for every style. She'll be enraptured by these timeless and colorful creations that are as affordable as they are beautiful. Let yourself get wrapped up in the spirit of the holidays with sensationally crafted jewelry from Lawhoff Jewelry and Gifts in Chillicothe and Trenton. Logan Odell takes a three-pointer to start things off here. and Out of the timeout, missed way off the mark. Norburn basketball, that's Tristan McDelly looking for his third three. Can't get it. Another freshman with a long rebound. That's Odell. Odell into the lane. That's going to be a charge. Clear control foul. Whistled against Logan Odell. Tristan McNelly down there to pick up that charge. Tell you what, he's got a pretty bright future in front of him, I would have to say. 30 to 12. Down to the three-minute mark. First half. Up in the middle of the court, it comes to Elliott. He hands it off to Tristan McNelly. Elliott to the block. Off the glass. No good. Hey, you saw that coming there. Shot it a little high. Logan Odell, right side. Juan Brandon with it now. Odell gets it at the right wing. Gives it to Kelly. Top of the circle. Left corner it goes to uh, nice entry pass to Kelly. Kelly can't capitalize on the first one. Put back, no good as well. Ties for the rebound. Instead, picks up what I believe to either be a frustration foul. In fact, it is that. A little upset he couldn't cap or capitalize on either one of those relatively easy two-point attempts. Kyle Kelly picks up a foul there. And like I said, that's the old frustration foul. Into the front court, Hayden Rimmer. Rimmer with it. Started by Brandon. Brandon out inside of his uniform there. He was so tied up on him. Taken away by Bramer. Up with it. Circles. Comes back up the court. Top of the circle. Between the legs he goes. Left side to Odell. Odell baseline drive. Off the glass and good. Logan Third. Odell. 20 point deficit for the Northern Pirates. Two minutes to go here. Remmer. Got an Odell down with 13 here. In this one, him and Jesse Yutt right around that same amount. I'll have to tell us that's scoring up. But either way, Bramer out in front by now 20. Ross Lyon thought about the three. Tried to leave it for Chilton Elliott. Kelly got a piece of it. Stolen away by Utt. Utt into the lane. Left hand, no good. Kelly there for the rebound. Put back block. That's on the right side. That's going to be Juan Brandon. His rebound, a nice one. He's fouled on the put back attempt. Juan Brandon, he's going to shoot a pair. Juan Brandon yet to score here so far in this one. Young number 22, a 5 foot 11 inch sophomore. Or sophomore, whichever you prefer. Yeah, they'll hit uh, Ross Lyon for his second personal 15 foul. Juan Brandon into the scorebook for the first time here tonight. And I'm going to have to go talk to Coach Deitch as he runs about nine substitutions in on it. Among them, Hayden Offit. Also, Jacob Uribe back in the game. I believe Jacob McCoy, the other one. High rebound. Bounces all over the place. Everybody missed time in the jumps. Logan Odell picks it up. Kicks it out to Utt. Utt at the free throw line. Crosses it over to the rack with it underneath too far. Gets it off to Kelly. Assist to Utt. The bucket to Kyle Kelly. Good looking pass. Court awareness there. Know where your players are. McNelly. McNelly in a little bit of trouble. Guarded by Utt. Pirates. They trail it by now 23. Tristan McNelly, McCoy, Jacob Uribe off it. And Tyler McNelly on the floor for the Pirates. That went out of bounds. Last touch by the Bobcats. Into the game for Bramer. Comes a new number we haven't seen yet. Number 20. Who's that, my friend? Trevor Barnes and Hayden Limmer will have a seat. Trevor Barnes. Hayden Rimmer out of the game. That shot no good by Tristan McNelly. Battle for the rebound goes out of bounds off of Bramer. It'll be McNelly now to inbound. We're going to have a few words with the head coach of the Lady Pirates. Mike Locke will do that here during halftime. We'll take a quick little break right as soon as it's over, and then we'll come back with him. Brandon off to Odell. Back to Brandon. He gets rewarded. Gets the bucket as well. Juan Brandon now with three in the quarter, three in the game. 45 seconds to go, 37-12. Bramer. 
Tyler McDelly fires up the three. It's good. He'll shoot the free throw as well. It's rare. We're going to see a chance for the four-point play here. You can tell that Tyler McNelly is... He's trying to catch up with Tristan McNelly right now, yeah. who has two threes. That's the first bucket of the game, I believe, for Tyler. It'll be a chance at the old four-point play, though. Tristan likes to shoot it from the behind the arc and until he's confident at it because he's taken several shots. He's missed a couple, but he keeps shooting it. Hey, you're going to feel strange in just a minute here, Brock Kirk, because there's a girl coming over here that's officially twice as tall as you are. <laughs> Thirty-eight point four to go here in the first half. I'll have to ask Coach Locke. I know we got Bill Englert out here, a great referee from around the area. Is that Dick Vote out there with him, Coach? I thought so. These two guys have been doing it a long time. Again, Cheyenne Baxter, Coach Black Locke, to join us here at halftime. As that one comes in, Bramer not got to be in any kind of hurry to do much of anything with it here. Kiwan Johnson with it on the left wing. He'll cross over in front of himself there and get it off. Right side it goes. Juan Brandon's three on the way. It's good. I'll tell you what, Coach Mike Lock joins us here. And this Bramer team, you know, they run out of Browns and Schreiers and guys like that over there. Got all these young players coming up, kind of like on your girls' team. Yeah, they just keep reloading every year, every year. They seem to have high speed. And I know we worked on practice the other day trying to just make them shoot the perimeter shots. And by God, they're hitting them tonight. They are. Kiwan Johnson, a quick little athletic kid. McNelly fires that one up. Uribe there for the rebound. Can't hit the putback, though. That's going to end our first half here. 40 to 16 is the final at half. We're going to take a quick little timeout. I'll come back, run down the scoring after that. Coach Mike Locke and Cheyenne Baxter will join us. We're going to take a uh, we'll take a two minute timeout. Come back the other side of that with Coach Locke and Cheyenne Baxter right here on Wave TV. Jill and Daryl of Essential Needs Day Spa and Cafe located in downtown Chillicothe invite you to stop by for great food and to experience their variety of great services. Jill and her staff offer 30 and 60 minute massages and beauty services like hair coloring and styling as well as pedicures and manicures. Daryl offers some of the greatest food in town with an extensive menu that includes breakfast served all day. Just stop by today at Essential Needs Day Spa and Cafe located in downtown Chillicothe on the east side of the square. Wow! This is Brent Klein, owner of the New Woody's Automotive Group in Chillicothe. Over the past few months, our customers have been giving testimony over the radio, bragging about their wow experience at the New Woody's. The bottom line is that 99.8% of our customers expressed tremendous satisfaction with the price, selection, and treatment. Our customers were wowed because we give our best price up front, the same price, on the net and the car, trade or not, third-party verified to be among the lowest in the nation with no hidden tacked on fees. The New Woody's Automotive Group in Chillicothe. Wow! Like what you hear? Go to wildwoodies.com. Piggly Wiggly is proud to be your locally owned hometown grocer, which means it's the only grocery store where the money spent in the store actually stays in the community. Featuring the best meat department in the area, where all the beef and pork is raised in the USA and cut and packaged right in the store. Piggly Wiggly Deli features delicious favorites like Champ's Chicken or Jack's Tenderloins. Dine in or carry out, lunch or dinner. Also available for catering any size with any menu. Book your next event through our deli department. Stop by Piggly Wiggly today for fast, convenient grocery shopping, exceptional meat quality, and down-home friendly folks. Support hometown, support Piggly Wiggly. Welcome back here on Wave TV. We're at the uh, home of the Pirates, Norburn High School, a 45-15 to 15 victory in game number one for the Lady Pirates. I'm joined right now by the head coach of the Lady Pirates. It's uh, Coach Locke. Coach, thanks for taking out some time. We know you're helping coach the boys as well, but thanks for coming up here. And You've washed your hair since the last time I talked to you. Yeah, we, uh, the girls, we were unfortunate and lost to Bramer last year, and uh, their coach dyed their hair pink because they beat us. So the girls, you know, I'll do anything to motivate my girls. I'm all about hard work and motivation, and I told them whatever it takes as long as they get a W. And so next thing I know, I'm in a chair and two cans of hairspray pink, and they all took turns and decorated, and I decided at halftime I need a quick wash, so I went down and washed. It didn't take long. I don't have much hair. No, well, I know what that's like, certainly. <laughs> I got it way less than you do, Coach, but always good to be a good sport like that, and I know that's why the girls like to play so hard for you as well. Yeah, I, I hope so. We have a good time. I really got a good group. I enjoy practicing every day with them and just showing up because they pay such great attention to detail. And, and uh, you know, you watched our game defensively. We have played so good all year defensively, and 
once we start, we executed offensively well. We just missed a lot of point-blank shots that, you know what, that's what the look that we're getting or trying to get, and we're getting it. I just hope come mid-year we start finishing those, and then we'll become a complete basketball team. I think so, and uh, your guard play is something. Uh, of course, you lost girls like Jossie Glaze, who was a big part of your team, shooting the basketball, handling the basketball, and uh, just young girls coming along, uh, trying to step into that role, fill bigger roles for your team. It's a little bit of a work in progress, but while you're a work in progress, you still got a very sound basketball team. Yeah, we really do, and and I'm, you know, I'll be the first to say I'm blessed to have such good kids, and they've 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 really worked at the game of basketball, and. You know, we'll just continue to grow. You saw a lot of freshmen playing tonight and a lot of sophomores, and we do have, have uh, five seniors on the team, but you see a lot of young kids putting in a lot of time, and, and that's going to pay dividends in the future. It's just so nice to have the senior leadership that I got because that's what makes the freshmen play as well as they do is because of the leadership from our older kids. And, you know, I don't expect anything less from them. I've, I've got to coach, and this is my fourth year with this group, and so I've got to take on this project when they were freshmen. And, and to watch them develop and grow has really been a nice thing. And to start the season, you know, 5-0 and is, is something that we wanted to do. And it doesn't always happen. I've never had a group to start 5-0. and But uh, we just got to continue, continue to grow and, and get better because you watched it tonight. You broadcast game. Even though we won by a handily margin, there's still a lot of things that we got to improve on. Right, exactly. A few things to clean up, no question about that. Hey, well, I noticed something kind of neat from up here. I've, I've been covering your games for a while now, and this group of seniors that you've got, I've been around and seen most of them since they were freshmen at least or whatever. Uh, Jennifer Finley, as we watch her from up here, uh, kind of amazing. A girl out there, a knee brace on both sides of things, still diving around for loose balls and everything like that. Kids like that, great to have on your basketball team. It is, and it's a little thing, and I'm not a big KU basketball fan, but I got a thing from Bill Self. It's called floor burns, and we keep track of them in the locker room, and basically every time a young lady dies after a loose ball, we make a tally, and they've made a competition out of it, and I think that's part of the hustle motivation thing we were talking about earlier. These kids, they see a loose ball, they don't think anything else but it, you know, that's mine, and that's what they're going after. So, yeah. Who's, who's leading in four burns right now? Do we know? Well, uh, Kaylee Wood, I believe, is. She's my two-time returning champ in that. So, but Not a big surprise there. I tell her if she quit dribbling off her foot, she wouldn't have to dive after as many basketballs. But anyway. I'll tell you what, she's a solid basketball player, whether, uh, whether the ball's in her hands and she's handling, whether it be on the board, scoring the basketball. She does just a little bit of everything for you. I'm sure also provides some great leadership for you out there, too. Yeah, she does. And I'm just, uh, like I said, I got her. And, you know, the lady that you're going to talk to here in a little bit, Cheyenne, and, and Devin McCoy, you know, she's our point guard. She really is the most unselfish kid I've been around. She doesn't, she would rather have an assist than score the basketball. And it's nice to have your point guard that wants that mentality and works hard. And the young lady you're getting ready to talk to here, Cheyenne Baxter, I mean, you know, you can, you can, I'm not an idiot. I've done this long enough. You can say it's, it's, it's coaching. It's, she just, she has some God given talent. And I'm blessed to get to work with her every day. And we've polished some of her skills, but her shot blocking skills are, are something that she just has comes naturally. Offensively is stuff that we've worked with to help her score because, quite frankly, there was a few times where we thought we were going to have to replace some backboards. But uh, she's really developed her game because as until now, her senior year, she really offensively was one of the I got a rebound and put it back. Now you see post moves from her. Now she's scoring the basketball, and our girls are looking to get the ball to her. And we understand, okay, let's work the ball inside, then out. Because we have a we had a game earlier this year. We were seven for ten three pointers, so we can shoot the three ball. But once we get everything going, Rod, I'm telling you, I, I, I really look forward and hoping we reach at about February. At least five teams in the CLAA. Uh, as it's made up this year at least, at least five teams, I would say, that all you guys could beat up on each, in each other on any given night, particularly the ones that had the home floor that night might be the ones with the advantage. But between the Meadvilles, the Northwesterns, Tyne Ablin with the Garber girl who can uh, really score it southwest, uh, probably a little bit more solid than people thought they would be with a lot of youngsters this year. Of course, you got the guy right down the road, Kenny Lehman. You got the best of them the other night. And uh, you're not a guy who's uh, going to make a whole lot out of an early season victory. But I tell you what, those ones against Harden Central have been hard to come by. There's been some hard-fought games. Nice to get that one under your belt and get a victory against the guys down the road here. It really is, and especially during a championship game, because that's why I kept preaching the girls. We've been fortunate enough to be in enough now that we need to start winning them. And, you know, there's uh, Rod, I'm gonna, there's three minutes left to go here. I know you want to talk to what? Cheyenne. She's kind of... She's kind of the focal point tonight with her 1,000 points, Absolutely. so I'm going to turn it over to her, and I appreciate what you guys do, and I, I'm glad you came down to cover us. All right, it's our pleasure. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and that's Coach Michael Locke of the Norburn Lady Pirates. And uh, 
Joining us now, the young lady that plays in the post for the Lady Pirates, a senior, Cheyenne Baxter. Cheyenne, thanks for taking out a little time to talk to us. Yeah, no problem. Well, uh, first off, congratulations. I've heard you've uh, signed a letter of intent softball-wise uh, to go play University of uh, Nebraska. Omaha. Omaha. In Omaha yep. Congratulations on that. Looking at you mainly as a pitcher probably up there then? Yes, I will be pitching pretty much. That's pr going to be my primary, and hopefully I can... Uh, increase my defensive and maybe I can slip in a position. Right, we know you played some shortstop with uh, when Jossie Glaze was doing some pitching mm -hmm. and things uh, uh, during your younger years, but uh, stepped in as a pitcher. I saw you win a, a state third place game there a couple years ago as uh, you came in and pitched the second day down to state and uh, pitched really well there. So obviously you showed a lot of great things and I'd heard kind of softball was your love among yes. the sports. So again, congratulations on that. Thank but you. Also another congratulations, a thousand points scoring uh, in your high school career. And uh, a lot of times get looked at more for your defense or your rebounding. But to get that past that 1,000-point mark, a great accomplishment uh, and uh, something you should be really proud of. I am. But um, I'd have to say that I cannot do that 1,000 points without the rest of my team because I don't dribble the ball. If they don't pass it, then I don't shoot. Right. So I owe a lot of thanks to my teammates as well. Right. You've had some really good guards. Like I said, Josie Glaze, you, you know, a younger girl like Angie Hamilton, who's there playing. I think she's a year behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, the McCoy girls, it seemed like they were around forever as well. And uh, just a lot of really good players. A very selfless team. I think that comes not just from you girls yourself, but also from your coach. He's just that kind of guy, too. Yes, he is. Well, uh, again, uh, a nice victory tonight. Uh, 45 to 15. I don't know what the totals were. I had you down for 18 points. Anybody told you any more than that? No, you'd be the first. Okay. To tell me. <laughs> all right. Well, I didn't have them all in front of me, but you've got a lot to be proud of. Still a very long season. A lot of tough basketball games in the CLAA. You'll run over to Meadville and see Coach Fairchild and those girls. You know that's always going to be a tough one. Southwest good right now. Tyne Avalon stepping back up. Things really tough in the CLAA. Yes, they are, and we just have to go out with the same intensity every game and cannot look down on any team because any one can win in the game of basketball. That didn't feel good to get a win over the uh, the uh, team down the road here the other day, did it? That feel pretty good? Yes, I did. Been a long time coming, hadn't it? Yes, we haven't won against Harden in quite a while, so Cheyenne, back good. Cheyenne Baxter has been our guest here. Cheyenne, we're going to get back to the game. Sorry uh, if I hadn't talked to Coach Longs, uh, Lux, uh, Locks along. We'd have had a little longer with you, but congratulations Thank on you. a great career so far. We'll see you some more this year. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Again, that's Cheyenne Baxter, the... Post player for the Northern Lady Pirates. Nice enough to stop by here as we get started in the second half. And uh, nice to talk with her and Coach Locke as well. I'm a little gabby tonight here, Brocker. Hey, that's all right. You know, one of the one of the things I picked up on, give credit to the teammates for, you know, helping her get those points. You know, that's that's a true athlete right there. You know, appreciate appreciative of the game and, and the team factor. Says a lot about what kind of young lady she is. My guess, what kind of people her parents are, the people that uh, surround her in her life as well. That is great to hear. That's good stuff and the kind of stuff we like to hear on Wave TV. Underneath, that shot missed. is still the same scores we started the second half with, fortunately, about a minute in as the Bobcats unable to convert right there. Into the front court it goes now. Lyon, he finds Chilton Elliott. Elliott off the glass. There to clean it up, though. Jesse Utt off the miss. Utt will bring it up into the front court. Stops right elbow. Kicks it to Shoe right side. Back to that three-pointer right wing. Way off the mark. Farther off the mark than we're used to Jesse Utt being, at least, anyway. But I needed to run the scoring down at half as Utt got in, went into half with 13 along with Logan O'Dell. Underneath, that one. Poked out of bounds by Jesse Ett. So Braver, 13 each for Odell and Ut. Six points for Juan Brandon. Two for Kyle Kelly. Three for Stephen Shue. Three for Joe Webb. That one comes in to Hayden Rimmer. He's had a three-pointer here. Several of the Pirates have, but they find themselves down by 25. Three for Tyler McGilley. Three for Uribe. Six Tristan McGilley. Three for Hayden Rimmer. Uh, baseline, off the glass is good. Good body control, kind of jack typed himself back underneath the backboard, popped back out, hits the shot. Jesse Ut now with 15. Not only offensively, but defensively as we started the second half here. Uh, I believe you were in your gab mode. Ut picked up a pretty nice block down here on the end defensively. Well, he's a, a smart player, one that can uh, really use his athleticism and his height. He goes down into the block, shot up and good. Nice entry pass by Logan O'Dell and putting that one up and in. Dylan Hall, his first points in the game. 44-15, in danger of a running clock. Goes to Chilton Elliott. About the medium block, pass right to Utt. Utt, a couple defenders to beat. He's headed to the rim with it. McNelly pokes it away. and Like it was nothing. McNelly made it look pretty easy and... Uh, 
focusing on the rim there, and McNally kind of came from the blind side a little bit and got that one poked away from him. Nice defensive play. Inbound comes to Shue. Shue now gets it back right side. His three on the way. Rattles in and out. No good. Hall there to get the rebound. Kicks it back out to Webb. His shot. Back iron. No good. Another rebound. This one goes to Logan Odell. Odell hammered. Knocked to the floor and helped up by Ross Lyon and a couple other players. And they're going to say offensive, I take it. Well, it was out of bounds one. I didn't ever see an indicator. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't either. I sure thought that. I thought they might have had Chilton, Chilton Elliott for the, for the foul. But. I thought Logan Odell got hammered. Apparently something else happened before that. McDelly looking for Uribe. Those two know each other well. A little miscommunication on that one, though, and goes out of bounds. A turnover for the Pirates. Set to check back in. Going to be Tristan McDelly for Bramer. Back in number 22, Juan Brandon for Bramer. And that sophomore's look pretty good off the bench here for Brad Cox's squad. Ut now with it. Right side, Brandon. Brandon back to Ut. They'll move it around to Webb. Far corner it goes. That's Brandon, actually, I should have said. Turn around, shot up and in. Dylan Hall. Two buckets here in the second half. Four points for him. Long pass, a little bit of a lollipop job. Taken away by Odell. Odell with a nice steal. Finds up. Right block off the glass. No good. Rebound. Put back is good. Had to make it a 33 point deficit for him. Northern Pirates, it's, it's 48 to 15, 440 to go here in the third. Up with four in the second half, 17 in the game. He leads Bramer in scoring. Logan Odell right behind him. Ross Lyon picks up his dribble, gets it off Tristan McNelly. Lyon back with it. Three-pointer on the way from him. Normally going to hit that shot. That one hits the front, then the back of the iron. No good. Weak side rebound. Goes off to Logan Odell. Odell to Brandon. Brandon looking inside. That's a play by Chilton Elliott right there as he gets in there and Knocks that one away. You saying that went off his head? It went off the noggin. Hey, that's way to use your head there, Chilton Elliott. Or if you play soccer. I know Chilton's been around for quite a while for this Pirate team. He's a good player. I've seen him go for right around that 20 mark. Inside it goes. Kyle Kelly with the bucket. Elliott boxed out. He boxed out the wrong guy. Wrong way. Kelly gets that one. Tristan McDelly breaks the pressure. Far corner it goes. Ross Lyon, now back to McNelly between the wheels. Lyon will get it back. He'll fire another three. That one just short. Rebound to Logan Odell. Saves it back in. Uribe tied up over there along with Juan Brandon. They'll say out of bounds. Last touch by the Northern Pirates. And here comes a plethora of substitutions for the Northern Pirates. Let me get those written on my list for me while I keep track of things. Any ones I don't have. Hey, we got a timeout. That's the best thing could have happened here. 50 to 15. The score. Running clock in order here. 50 to 15. The Bobcats lead the Northern Pirates. Back in 30 seconds here on Wave TV. It's never happened before. It may never happen again. It's Clark's Furniture's huge pre-holiday private sale. For the first time ever, Clark's private sale goes public. You heard right, but time's running out to save up to 70% off store-wide. This is your golden opportunity to shop some of the most respected names in home furnishings, like Flex Steel, Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Natootsie, Ashley, Vaughn Bassett, Serta, and others, all at savings of up to... A few substitutions here for Norburn. Into the game at number 25, which is Brandon Benefield. That shot blocked. One Brandon in there. Tyson Skaggs with the block. 53, Tyson Skaggs. Tyson Skaggs, number 53. Into the game also for Norburn. McCoy. McCoy brings the ball across midcourt, guarded by Kiwan Johnson. Over on the left side is Walker Russell. Number 41 there, Number Walker 41. Russell. We'll get them all down eventually. I'm getting there, buddy. Jesse Yuck. He was cut off there by Brandon Benefell. Kicks it to the right side, Kiwan Johnson. Johnson looks inside for Kelly. And Tristan McNelly says, give me that, Mr. Johnson. Playing with some enthusiasm, Key Juan. It's a fun well, name to say. It is. <laughs> he was one of the three young men, Joe Webb, one of the others. I cannot recall who the other was 
You remember the house fire in Bramer where the family was asleep, the three young men woke them up? Kiwan Johnson and uh, Joe Webb among them. I can't name the other one off the top of my head. But uh, it was a pretty neat deal. Tristan McNelly tripped up. Logan O'Dell probably got to get whistled for that. He does. Mr. Roach flashes the 2-1 anyway. That's his second. Second team foul. Inbound pass. Going to be inbound triggered by Brandon Benefell. Comes to the safety valve, McNelly. McNelly fakes Odell. Skip pass over in the far corner to Walker Russell. Russell baseline. Leaves it there. Nice pass and a nice finish. Get Tyson to Skaggs with the bucket. 50 to 17. 250 to go here. Jesse Utt drives down inside the lane. Shot no good. Rebound. Going to come down the way of. Well, it's stolen away by Norburn. Oh, a slick spot on the floor. Tristan Young. Jesse Hutt to the rack. Misses the dunk. Miss, gets it to go in, but missed the dunk itself. Out. Jesse, unable to throw that one down with authority, but he's capable. Believe Break, me. Breakaway we've been waiting for. Three-pointer put up by McNelly. No good. McNelly, no good. I'm going to give those points to Jesse Hutt after the... What's well, called a layup now since it wasn't a dunk. Kiwan Johnson can't buy it. Kyle Kelly the rebound and the stick back. Playing the cleanup man. One point scored in that third period, I believe, for the Northern Pirates. Or none. 54 to 17. Two minutes to go here in the third. Re Kiwan Johnson. Good hard rebound. Long pass. Uh, uh, to the rim. Left hand reverse layup. That was pretty. We're going to see it. We'll see the jam here. If he uh, gets keep. Keep breaking away like that. I'm itching to see it. That was a nice shot or a nice pass to him by Kiwan Johnson, but he switched over. He was going to go for the dunk from the right side and said switched over, went left hand reverse. That was a pretty play. Jim Bly better have those highlights up of that shot. To the rim, McCoy can't buy it. He'll shoot two. 56-17, a running clock, or what should be a running clock here. A little surprised it's not. Just yet, got to come over and talk things over with Brad Cox. Fourth personal foul for Kyle Kelly. It would be the third team foul of the half. We've got Ut and a few others going to be checking out here. And Coach Cox going to give him a well-deserved round of applause from the faithful. Ut has a seat. He'll end up his night with 21. Logan O'Dell, a nice night. Doesn't score here in the second half, I don't believe. 13 in the first for him. 56-17. Kyle Kelly have a seat. McCoy misses that one at the line. Into the game, Dylan Hall for the Bobcats. Hall started this game as well. Trevor Barnes, I think he just came in. I've got Barnes down, number 20. Another big, strong-looking young man down there in Bramer. Kiwan Johnson is harassed, but gets past a couple defenders. Pulls up free throw line. Can't get it with the bounce. Rebound, no good by, or the shot, no good by Hall. Kiwan Johnson with the rebound. Kicks it. Juan Brandon's three. Too strong. Tipped up and around. Shot no good underneath. They let that one go a little bit. McCoy will bring it up now. Right side. Three-pointer on the way. That's Benefil. Can't get it. Rebound. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Bobcats. The Bobcats going to take the victory probably in this one. Is we're at 56-17, 55 to go here in the third. We may see a couple of players back in there. I'd be surprised. That one's short of the mark. Bringing the basketball up for Bramer now is Hayden Lamer. It's on the line. Kewan Johnson steps out of bounds. Met the turnover. 45 second mark here. Period number three. 56-17. Shot baseline. Big high arching job. Teardrop shot. No good. Taken out of there by... Hayden Lamer. Lamer splits two defenders. Gets right through them. Runs into three more. Holds things up. Good move by him. Tristan McDelly has to go looking for the pass. Thought they might get him for the travel. Well, instead, we're going to have a kick ball. 29 seconds to go. 56-17. Bobcats over the Pirates. Here in the third quarter. Time starts to tick now. 25 seconds to go in the third. Jacob McCoy with it. Comes out to Tristan McNelly, out near half court. Kiwan Johnson, a nice steal, steps on the sideline, but I tell you what, his quickness very evident. 
Fancy footwork, both sides of the court. Steps out of bounds. Let's turn over again. Well, he jumps high, too. Look at that. He is jumping all over the place, this Kiwan. Wave TV, we could say look at that, right? Yes, I guess we can. <laughs> a little bit unusual for us. Kiwan Johnson going to bring it up to the floor. Got by with a little push off. Goes behind the back. Hesitation dribble. Right elbow. Tosses it out of bounds. Pass was intended for Trevor Barnes. Enthusiasm for Kiwan Johnson. Tone it down a little bit. Be making some nice plays. Third quarter ends, 56-17. That would make that a 39-point lead for the Bramer Bobcats here at the home of the Pirates, Norburn High School. Let's get set to start the fourth. We're going to do that in 60 seconds here on Wave TV. With the High V Fuel Saver Rewards Card, you can save big at the pump. Simply sign up at customer service, then shop our ad for weekly Fuel Saver products. For every one you buy, you'll earn a discount on gas, as much as $2 or more per gallon. Because the more you shop, the more you save. Sign up for the High V Fuel Saver Rewards Card at customer service today and start to earn big discounts on gas. Some restrictions apply. What did uh, Mike come on? All right. Hey, we're back here on Wave TV. Rod Tompkins, Brock Kerr, and the Jim Bly here with the production camera jack-of-all-trades duty tonight. Extraordinaire. He is the man behind Wave TV. He makes the technology go. You know what we're called in the TV radio business, though? We're called talent, brother. I would have said ugly. Well, I would say that as well, <laughs> especially about you. Kiwan Johnson fouled on his shot attempt. Rod Tompkins alongside Willie Robertson. A lot of folks will get that. Yeah. Kiwan Johnson. His shot, no good. We uh, have a running clock in order now here in the fourth period. 39 point lead. Johnson's second attempt. That one fails to drop. Saw every inch of the rim, but didn't fall for him. Elon Johnson with the steal. Nice looking steal as the pass was put out by Uribe. A shot was put up by Hayden Lamer. No good. And two Bobcats on the floor. Juan Brandon. Kiwan Johnson goes out of bounds off of the Bobcats. They find themselves out in front by 39. Tyler McNelly brings it up. Working on Johnson who did a little flop job. Chilton Elliott from the left block. Elliott's first points here in the game. 56-19. Kiwan Johnson, again, just couldn't get it to fall. He's having a tough night offensively, but make it up for it in other ways. Rimmer. Hayden Rimmer from the left side. A little deuce for him. Makes it 56-21 with 6.25 to go here running clock. First time we've heard from Mr. Rimmer in a little while. Trying to leave it inside there was... Juan Brandon is pass intended for Trevor Barnes, who couldn't hold on. Poked out of bounds by Norburn, though. Brandon to trigger the inbound. Baseline left. The squad out in front by 35. Finds Barnes. Barnes over the top to shoe. Right side now it comes. Lamers three. Rattles in and out. No good. Chilton Elliott rebound off to McNelly. Tyler McNelly meets Kiwan Johnson, or Kiwan Johnson meets him, I guess I should say. Hayden Rimmer leaves it for Elliott just outside the left block. Back to Rimmer, left wing with it. Top of the circle now to Ross Lyon. Lyon, Shelton Elliott, high post, kicks it back out. Far corner it goes. Tyler McNelly with a fake, pulls up, then a nice little pass underneath to Shelton Elliott. Elliott can't buy the bucket though. Into the front court, Hayden Lamer. Right side, he's had a couple nice shot attempts, but has been unfortunate on the roll on both of them. Instead, he'll go baseline. Pull up from there as he got pushed underneath the bucket. Barnes off the backboard. No good. Juan Brandon, they really crashed the boards there. Couldn't come out of there with it. Ross Lyon, right block. Has his shot partially blocked. Brandon turns it around. Heads the other way. Into the lane he goes. Jump stop. Reverse layup. No good. Pretty move, though. Yeah, couldn't get it to fall. Thought he was going clear underneath. He actually turned his back and shot with his back to the basket. Couldn't get it. Chilton Elliott from the right block. No good. Rebound. Barnes had it. Ends up then 
to Lamer, and Kiwan Johnson now controls it, and he'll slow it down and bring it up. First time we've seen Kiwan slow down tonight. I was just getting ready to say, Kiwan and slow down, but doesn't really go well. Juan Brandon gets the bounce. Brandon's been a good-looking young player here. I've got him down for eight in the game now, off the bench. Hayden Rimmer, met by Lamer. Looks down low for Elliott. Stolen away by Barnes. Barnes gets the steal, gives it off to Hayden Lamer. Right elbow he goes. Kicks it to Juan Brandon. Brandon guarded by Jacob Uribe. He won Johnson with it right side. Back to Brandon now as they play catch with it. Far side, shoes three-pointer, block. Ross Lyon got a piece of that one. Four-minute mark to go. You won't find a nicer young man if I mention this than Ross Lyon. He's a nice youngster. Right side, he'll take a three. Good fake on shoe. Fires the three. He Good looking it. shot. That's the guy we're used to seeing right there, Ross Lyon. Nice little fake move. Got the open shot. Hit it. Flamer. Backs Rimmer down. Kicks it to Kiwan Johnson. Into the lane. Jump stop. Passes it back out. He finds Lamer. Lamer into the lane. Pulls up from 14. Back iron. No good. Rimmer with the rebound. Nice crossover move there by McDelly into the lane. Off the iron. No good. He kind of finger rolled it and it rolled off the front of the rim, then the back. Juan Brandon hits the other end. One on three break. Pirates just can't get anything to fall. Well, those numbers don't shot. mix good when you're on offense. Rimmer leads the pass for Elliott. His shot blocked. Blocked by Brandon. Put back attempt. Good by Chilton Elliott, though. Elliott able to get the deuce. Norburn coming back a little bit here. They trail it by 32 still, though. And, uh, we have about 3.05 to go. Timeout on the floor. We're going to take one right along with them. Back with more right after this here on Wave TV. This year, wrap up your holidays in an unforgettable way. Indulge your loved ones with jewelry as unique as she is, with gorgeous gold and exquisite diamonds in the latest fashions. It's nearly impossible to go wrong. From classic to modern, there are options for every style. She'll be enraptured by these timeless and colorful creations that are as affordable as they are beautiful. Let yourself get wrapped up in the spirit of the holidays with sensationally crafted jewelry from Lawhoff Jewelry and Gifts in Chillicothe and Trenton. Hey, I was hoping there, one of our fine sponsors, Lawhoff Jewelry. Can you sing the Lawhoff Jewelry a jingle for us, maybe, Brock Kerr? Uh, maybe if I knew it. Yeah, that would probably help. We never know what Lawhoff we're talking to. Father and son, they sound the same. Into the game for Bramer, number 45, Jordan Fuller. Makes his father and son. I think there's a couple twins, a couple sets of twins in that family. That shot fired up by the Bobcats. No good into the game for them. Also, number 10, Brent Campbell. Oh, we have player control call, player control foul on the other end. That'll be the charge. That one going to go against Tyler McNally. McNally's fourth. Jordan Ford, did you get him in? Yes, I did, number 45. Along with number 10, Brendan Campbell. Campbell leaves it for Fuller. Fuller hands the basketball off. Also into the game, number 13, Wade Phillips. Oh, Wade Phillips, another Legion baseball player. Thought the name sounded familiar. Brother of brother of Tracy, senior who graduated last year. Jordan Fuller saves it. Gets a little love from the Bramer crowd, too, as he saves it off one of the Northern Pirates. That's good to see right there. That was fun stuff. That's the old... Uh, Black top play. Don't throw it off the other guy. That even elicited a smile from Mr. Engler. Number 24 also into the game for Bramer. Fuller can't get the three. Long rebound. Taken out by Hayden Rimmer. Pass over the top. Almost too tall for McNelly. He'll corral it. Bring it back out. Great baseline drive to the rack off the glass and good. He shows uh, some of his experience right there. Just Tyler McNelly. Just five in the game for him. That's what I got him down for, though. 30-point deficit for the Pirates here approaching the one-minute mark. Shot no good by Wade Phillips. That went too hard off the glass. Into the front court. Uribe. Going to be a two-pointer. Put on the line on it. Good spotting job there by Mr. Engler. That one was close. Thank you, Uribe. Second three of the game. Six for him. Baseline he goes. Shot from there. It's good. Followed up and in by number 33, 
Also just into the game. Who's that going to be? Good, not, good question, isn't it? Not listed. Number 33. It's not in the program. That's Uribe. Baseline shot. No good. Chilton Elliott there from the left side to get the rebound and the putback. Elliott now. Six in the quarter. Six in the game. Fuller. Dribbles to the right side. Hands the basketball off to Brendan Campbell. Campbell has his pass taken away by Uribe. 18 seconds to go. Right side he goes. Can't get it. Ross Lyons put back. No good. Ball bounces off everybody's head a couple times. Then it's corralled. Taken out of there by Brendan Campbell. That's Fuller. Stops underneath. Turns around. Hook shot. Can't get it. Pretty good looking shot from where he was at. Fuller could not get it. That shot comes too late as well by Campbell. Our final. 60 to 32. The final in this one, Rob Tompkins, Brock Kerr. We're going to come back, get the scoring together, then we're going to wrap things up quickly so everybody can go home. 60 to 32, Kramer victorious in game number two. An ice night from Jesse Ett, also from Logan Odell and a few others. And uh, some good hard play on the behalf of the Northern Pirates as well. We're going to take a one-minute one minute timeout, come back to the other side of that with scoring and the wrap-up here on Wave TV. It's never happened before. It may never happen again. It's Clark's Furniture's huge pre-holiday private sale. For the first time ever, Clark's private sale goes public. You heard right, but time's running out to save up to 70% off store-wide. This is your golden opportunity to shop some of the most respected names in home furnishings, like Flex Steel, Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Natootsie, Ashley, Vaughn Bassett, Serta, and others, all at savings of up to 70% off. You'll find a huge selection of reclining furniture on sale including rockers, wall huggers, heated massage chairs, lift chairs, and more. Reclining sofas start at just $5.99. Save up to 50% on gorgeous dining room groups and save hundreds on best-selling mattress sets by Serta and Tempur-Pedic. Plus, get free box springs, pillows, and blankets. And find huge savings on adjustable bases. Interest-free financing for three full years is available. Don't wait. The incredible pre-holiday private sale is coming to an end at Clark's Furniture in Chillicothe. This year, wrap up your holiday. With the High V Fuel Saver Rewards Card, you can save big at the pump. Simply sign up at customer service, then shop our ad for weekly Fuel Saver products. For every one you buy, you'll earn a discount on gas, as much as $2 or more per gallon. Because the more you shop, the more you save. Sign up for the High V Fuel Saver Rewards Card at customer service today and start to earn big discounts on gas. Some restrictions apply. Rod Tompkins, Brock Kerr, the home of the Pirates, Norburn High School. The uh, first game, 45 to 15, in favor of the Lady uh, Pirates here from Norburn. Braver Bobcat boys take the second game, 60 32. Here's how the scoring broke down for the Norburn Pirates. I had Chilton Elliott with six. Ross Lyon with three. Five points for Tyler McDelly. Also five for Hayden Rimmer. Six apiece for Jacob Uribe and Tristan McDelly. Jacob McCoy with a couple points. Tyson Skagg. Put in a deuce as well. 32 is what that adds up to. The 60 points for the Bramer Bobcats. Here's how they came. Jesse Yett with 21 leading the way. Logan Odell with 13, the freshman, all in the first half. Elsewhere, Juan Brandon, good-looking young player with 8 points. The experienced postman Kyle Kelly with 6. 4 points for Dylan Hall. 3 for Steven Shoup. 3 for Joe Webb as well. 60 to 32 the final. And uh, a split here between Norburn and the Braver Bobcats tonight. Brock Kerr, nice job calling the girls' game. Appreciate you coming along. Any final uh, parting thoughts here? Now, nah, it's a good play by uh, you know both teams, both teams, both sides. Uh, nice to come out and watch a little basketball. And time to head home. All right, it is. Thanks to Jim Bly as well. Mary Bly back at the studios trying to help us do the radio thing. We had a bit of a tough time there tonight because of a phone line issue. We'll get that all worked out. That won't happen again, folks. But thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to Ian Lapine for putting some things together. We'll even thank the good mayor of Chillicothe, Chuck Haney. He uh, had a part in it as well. So uh, appreciate Brock coming along. Appreciate the job that everybody else does. And uh, that's going to wrap things up. A split between Norburn as the Norburn girls take it, the Bramer boys take it, and uh, that's the way things go here on Wave TV this evening. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank our sponsors and everyone else. We'll have more broadcasts coming your way in the near future. Don't forget about the Tim Cool and Rachel Parkey show on Wave TV. 
the, the Darren Smith and Tony Fairchild shows coming up soon, as well as Julie Bopwell, Tyler Anderson, all that stuff coming to you very soon on the Waves. Keep uh, all over the Waves website. Also, uh, check out uh, different Facebook pages, things like that. We'll keep you aware of what's going on. That wraps it up for tonight, though. That myself and everybody else, thanks for tuning in to Wave TV. Daryl of Essential Needs Day Spa and Cafe located in downtown Chillicothe invites you to stop by for great food and to experience their variety of great services. Jill and her staff offer 30 and 60 minute massages and beauty services like hair coloring and styling as well as pedicures and manicures. Daryl offers some of the greatest food in town with an extensive menu that includes breakfast served all day. Just stop by today at Essential Needs Day Spa and Cafe located in downtown Chillicothe on the east side of the square.